Welcome back to Cat Talks, I'm Cat, and this is the place where I talk mostly about books and writing. Today I will be talking about the reasons why you should read The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. In an Islamic fantasy, this kind of this book brings life and breathes life into a vibrant world with non-human creatures and creatures that don't even look human. It's like it's brimming with life, this book. I adore it. So this is an adult fantasy set in a sort of Islamic world full of jinn, which are fire creatures. There are also water, air, and earth, but we don't see them much in we see an air. We don't see much of the other types of creatures in here, but it is set in that kind of mythology. So the book starts with Nari. Now she is a con woman living on the streets of Cairo, trying to save money in order to become a healer. Now there are two things you need to know about Nari. One is that she's able to sense diseases in people and know how to heal them automatically by magic. We this this is explained through the course of the book. Oh, that the wrong finger to hold up. And two, she's able to understand and speak any language she's ever heard, even just once. Now, as an orphan, she has to do a lot of things, including stealing, and she kind of like, you know, she pretends to heal people and she, she gives like a rich man instructions to go out in the desert, for example, to fast for three days in order to get rid of a problem with his heart. And while he's out, she will case his house and steal his stuff. So Nari is a pretty unrepentant thief, and while doing a con of healing for a mentally troubled child or daughter, um, she accidentally summons an, a, a spirit that we don't know what it is at this time. So this spirit chases her through the streets of Cairo, um, in the in the body of this troubled young woman who is now like perfectly straight and like very creepily changed and luckily our heroine heroine our heroine nari is saved by a jinn who turns up out of nowhere and protects her now this jinn recognizes what she is which is the only surviving member of a ruling tribe from the city of brass Davabid, Davabad, Davabid, 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 anyway so from then on, Nari is introduced to magic she never imagined existed and dragged away from her, like the little world that she'd created there in Cairo. The voice is quite a fresh one and the style is very easy to read, I would say. It's not excessively flowery, but you do get a sense of the streets, the heat, the, the people. The voice is quite similar. It's all told in third person and it is similar whenever it switches viewpoints, which can make it a little difficult to see what's going on at first, but it's easily rectified by the author because you know, the name of the person is right there in a couple of paragraphs at the very least. The strengths of this book, and the reason everyone seems to be raving about it, is definitely its political twists and turns. This is a book that every single character you feel has an underlying motive. You never really get to know them, but you get to kind of like feel their emotions and see their actions. They are fully formed characters that make decisions that you are screaming at as a, re as a reader, that don't always make sense, and that kind of like act as political machinations. Every single character has their own life and complexity and you can get behind them. They all have histories and they're kind of like they're doing things even if they only show up for a couple of chapters. Chakrabordi is a master of making you feel and understand people who only show up for a page, including this old guy who came in to be healed. He was actually the saddest part of the entire book. And there were some pretty sad parts in this book. However, every book has some weaknesses and The City of Brass is no exception despite being one of my favourite reads of 2019. It is slow. It takes a long time to get into this book. The beginning, like third, like half, <laughs> is Nari travelling from Cairo to this magical city and not much happens. This part is actually heavy on the kind of like brooding romance-ish of the two main characters, they're not even the main characters, of two characters, and not much else happens. Now, you do see some of the power of the world and the magic, but mm. So, what can you learn as an author from reading this book? This is what you should learn. You should learn how to manage multiple kind of plot lines that come together and diverge, and um, kind of like have consequences. All the characters have consequences to their actions that spiral out of their control, and this is a very, like, unique and interesting way of writing that you definitely should pick up if you're planning on writing political thrillers or an in-depth world like this. Another reason that you should definitely be studying Chakraborty's writing is the ace in the sleeve epilogue. The twists and turns of this novel pale in comparison to the last like six pages. Seriously, you won't even understand what I'm talking about until you read this. I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but it's definitely a masterpiece of kind of like, see, I'm getting goosebumps even remembering what happened, okay? Okay. Finally, if you want to see a heroine who is not strong, who does not know how to use her powers, who is new to the country, who is not muscled and broad, but is trickstery and we and trickstery and wild and 
has the ability to manipulate people and understand people's emotions and motives and kind of like fulfill the role for them that they need, then Nari is a great example of a strong heroine who doesn't have muscles and doesn't know how to fight. All right, now what to learn to avoid from reading this manuscript. The first one I've already mentioned, and that is the pacing. The book is slow AF. Like, if you are a writer, learn from this to condense the traveling, like have it happen and get to know the characters, but not chapters and chapters upon chapters. Learn from J.R.R. Martin. Sometimes traveling needs one chapter, maybe less. Another thing you should learn to avoid is the world building. Chakraborty has, as I said, made the city and these people come to life, but she has done it in such a way that the glossary is the most used part of her book for most readers. There are Jin, there are Deva, there are Ifrits, there are some other things that I can't even remember. There are so many family names used at various points in the novel that it is very difficult, in fact, to follow what's going on unless you either you have a very strong like familial ties to the area and to the Islamic fairy tales, or you are a dedicated fantasy reader, I think it would be honestly quite hard for anyone new to fantasy to get into this, and therefore you should study this in order to learn how to make your world building less intense. <laughs> The third thing would be the multiple viewpoints. The first time you're introduced to the ultimate viewpoint, which is one of the rulers of the city's sons, in this book is, is so jarring and it completely took me out of the book. I couldn't even believe we weren't Nari anymore. We'd spent two or three chapters as Nari. We'd gone through the main inciting event. We'd kind of like been with her through all of that. And then suddenly we're somewhere else in a different place, following a completely different plot line, full of those jam-packed glossary words I mentioned before. Don't do this as an author. Have a look at, even just read the first couple of chapters if you don't want to read the book. You will see what I mean. It is such a change in in everything and it makes no sense. It should have been introduced a lot earlier in the novel, I think, even just a hint of it because it is so jarring. Finally, we come to the comps. So I have two comps for this one. As always, one I've read and one I haven't. If you enjoyed this book, City of Brass, and you want to see a more politically leaning book with maybe the same twists and turns, but it kind of is managed in a slightly different way. I definitely recommend The Tethered Mage by Melissa Caruso. This follows a young daughter of the court who has kind of accidentally come into the ownership of a person with magical powers who definitely doesn't want to be owned. That book is so good. There are trigger warnings for both City of Brass and The Tethered Mage of Slavery, but I think both books kind of manage that in a really good way. It's definitely not something that's accepted wholeheartedly by either book, so I definitely recommend checking out The Tethered Mage. The other one I haven't read but it was recommended to me by a fellow booktuber, Rogers Reads, and that is The Golem and the Genie by, by Helene Wecker. This one is supposed to be an incredible journey. There are two entities from Jewish slash Islamic mythology, the Genie and the Golem, and they kind of cross paths in turn of the century New York and wreak havoc. It's supposed to be an absolutely amazing read and obviously I put it on my TBR because Roger told me to and I do everything that man says. His channel will be linked down below, of course. All right, that is all I have to say about The City of Brass. If you liked the video, obviously give it a big fat thumbs up. If you want to see more of these, leave a comment explaining which book I should do next, and keep reading!